In this video, I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use the Ambient platform, which is gonna qualify you for two airdrops, Ambient and also the Scroll Layer 2. And I think this is probably one of the best two-for-one airdrop targets within the Scroll ecosystem because Ambient is probably the largest DEX on Scroll, and then Scroll itself is obviously gonna drop a token at some point. Now, before you can follow along with this tutorial, you're obviously going to need to have an Ethereum wallet. You're going to need to have the Scroll network set up on that wallet and you're gonna to need to have some ETH or USDC or other tokens. And I have some other tutorials showing how to bridge funds to the scroll network if you haven't done that yet. But once you do have an ETH wallet with some funds on the scroll network, then connect it to the Ambient platform and you're ready to go. Now the great thing about Ambient is that it's a pretty simple platform. There's not actually that much that you need to do in order to qualify for the airdrop, but obviously the more money that you have to allocate this, the better off you'll be. So in this demo wallet here, I have about $100, but if you have more money to allocate towards this, then it's going to increase the chances of qualifying for an airdrop and then also obviously getting a larger amount in an airdrop. And the two main things you need to do on Ambient are to swap and then provide liquidity. Now at the top here, you'll notice there's swap and trade, but it's actually more or less the same thing. So if you click on the swap button, it's a very simple swaps feature where you just select the asset you wanna swap from and the asset you want to swap to. Now the trade feature is more or less the same as the swaps feature, except you get this nice candlestick chart that you can customize, or you can also actually use limit orders. So let's say for example, I wanted to buy wrapped Bitcoin and I was waiting for the price to go down a little bit before I got in. Well, I could set a limit price target here. And if I change the limit price, it actually shows on this chart right here with this dotted line, where my price target is, where I'm looking to enter. And so this is definitely a nice feature to have, which you can use if you're targeting a specific entry point. Otherwise, you can just use the simple swaps feature to trade at the current market price. So right now I'm going to swap some ETH for some staked ETH. This is Lido staked ETH. And then I'm gonna take that and deposit it into a liquidity pool. So I'm just gonna hit confirm transaction here and then verify the details. I like low slippage, 0.1% is great. So I'm gonna hit submit swap and then confirm this transaction in my wallet. And when the transaction goes through successfully, you may notice that you don't see the new token that you just swapped for in your wallet if you're using MetaMask. And what you need to do is import the token. So go to the activity tab in your wallet, click on the transaction that you just completed, and then click view block explore. And what you need to do is go to the token for wrapped staked ETH on the scroll network, click on that. And then at the top here, you can either copy and paste this contract address or if you hit on these three little buttons, you can click add token to Web3 wallet. And then this will allow you to see the balance in your MetaMask or whatever wallet you're using. So let's add that token in there. And now if I open up my wallet and go back to tokens, I can see my balance. All right, so that is the first step done. And that's really the first half of this equation. And the more that you swap or trade on Ambient and create a higher transaction volume and the value of the transactions that you create, the better off you'll be for their airdrop. And then the next step, is to use their liquidity pools. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna swap some ETH into USDC as well because that makes for a more interesting liquidity provision. Because the thing about staked ETH and ETH is that they're correlated assets and you won't actually earn much in terms of a fee on providing liquidity for that pair. But if you use a stable coin and ETH, you can earn a lot more and there's just more options for what you can do. So I'm gonna show you how to provide liquidity with ETH and USDC rather than ETH and staked ETH. And the same thing applies for adding the USDC token to your wallet. If it doesn't show up automatically, you have to go to the block explorer and then import the token into your wallet so that you can see your balance. So yeah, there we go, add token. Okay, back to Ambient Finance. Let's go to the liquidity pool tab. Now this might look a little bit complicated, but it's actually not that bad. So first you need to decide which pair of assets you're going to provide liquidity for. I'm gonna do ETH and USDC because it's a little bit more interesting than correlated assets in ETH and wrapped staked ETH. And the reason for that is that these two assets don't really diverge in price because it's basically the same thing. Over a longer period of time, wrapped staked ETH becomes worth a little bit more because of the accrual of that staking yield. However, unless there's some sort of black swan depegging event, then these two assets will more or less move at the exact same pace. However, with a stablecoin pair, obviously the price movements are completely uncorrelated. And if the price of ETH goes way up or way down in US dollars, then it's going to have an impact on the liquidity that we're providing. So this is where we need to make some decisions. Now, for starters, I'm going to deposit the full amount of USDC 
and it's going to automatically put up an equivalent dollar amount in ETH. Now the next step is that we need to select the range in which we want to provide liquidity. So this bar right here allows you to slide and choose the price range that you want to provide liquidity for. And the TLDR of this is, if you provide liquidity within a very tight band, like this for example, at plus or minus 3% relative to the current price, then you're going to make more in fees, and then you have a much lower risk of something called impermanent loss because you'll be stopped out of your position at plus or minus 3%. However, you are going to have to come back a lot more often and rebalance your liquidity pool provision if you do a tight range like this. Because if the price goes above the range that you set or below the range that you set, then you are no longer in range and you won't be earning fees on that and your liquidity provision will be essentially inactive. And so if you set a wider range, the fee that you earn is a little bit lower. However, you have to come back less often to rebalance it. So let's say I set a 10% range here, which is 10% above the current price and 10% below the current price. So if the price of ETH went up to $2,432, my liquidity provision, which is currently balanced at about $22 worth of USDC and $22 worth of ETH. Well, if the price goes up, then I would be completely out of ETH and my entire position would be in USDC. And the same thing on the downside, if the price of ETH goes down, then I would have zero USDC and all ETH at the lower end, $1,991. So basically when you provide liquidity within this range, you're saying I'm willing to buy ETH at this price and be completely in ETH, or I'm willing to sell ETH at this price and be completely in US dollars. And the wider the range that you set, the more the price has to go up or down for you to be basically stopped out of your position and then you have to come back and rebalance it. So when I'm providing liquidity for an asset like ETH, which I do like and I'm happy to hold long term, especially if I get it at a low price like this, I don't mind setting a wider range because it's less work for me to come back and rebalance it often. Even though the fee tier is slightly less, if you set a larger range, I like a low maintenance liquidity pool strategy. So I might even set the range to plus minus 30% or even 50% on something like ETH USDC. But if I was providing liquidity for a token that I didn't want to hold and I was just trying to make a quick dollar in fees, then I might set a tighter range. So for this position here, let's say I want to set a plus or minus 33% range. Now there's two transactions that I have to approve to make this deposit. The first is to allow the spending of my USDC tokens. And then the second is to actually make the deposit. So let's go ahead and do these two transactions, which are gonna cost just a couple of cents each. Yeah, seven cents for the first one. And then the second transaction we'll confirm, and this is gonna cost 17 cents. Now, if you wanna track everything that you're doing on the Ambient platform, you can see the list of the transactions that you've done. If you have limit orders open, they'll show up here. And in the liquidity page, you'll be able to track your position. And if you click on it, it will pop up in the chart showing you how close it is to the top or the bottom of your range and whether or not it's within the range. And if it is, then you'll be earning a yield or an APR on that. So I deposited just over $40 of liquidity on this demo account into Ambient. Obviously, the more that you deposit and the longer that you hold it on the platform, the better it will be for the purposes of airdrop farming. And if you're trying to maximize your airdrop farming on the platform, you wanna make sure that it stays within range, that the APR status is green, and then you can try to move some volume on the swaps with the trading features as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it. If you follow all those steps and use larger amounts, then you'll qualify for an ambient finance airdrop as well as a scroll airdrop. So hopefully you found this little tutorial helpful and good luck.